Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Ashur. Uh, today, we are going to continue our talk about anti-Parkinsonian drugs. Today, the part three, the final part of anti-Parkinsonian drugs, where we discuss the uh, actions and side effects of uh, dopamine receptor agonists, catechol-O-methyl transferase and MAO-B inhibitors, and amantadine. We'll also discuss the central anticholinergics. Uh, again, uh, the same uh, figure that includes uh, all the classes of anti-Parkinsonian drugs. The first class is the dopamine receptor, receptor agonists, which include the ergot uh, derivatives, bromocriptin, pergolite, and pramipixol, neural, which are uh, ergot, uh, non-ergot derivatives. Okay, so these drugs uh, have the advantage that they don't require enzymatic uh, conversion to active metabolite. Uh, remember in levodopa, we, levodopa has to be converted into dopamine by the dopa decarboxylase, dopa decarboxylase, right? And you have to use dopa decarboxylase peripheral inhibitor or peripheral decarbo dopa decarboxylase inhibitor like uh, carbidopa, benzirazide, uh, to uh, allow the buildup of uh, uh, levodopa and passage through the blood-brain barrier. Here you don't need that, okay? Also, they don't compete with other substances to active transport and continue with the levodopa also. Levodopa competes with the tyrosine for the passage through the blood-brain barrier. Here, no, because you're just going through the CNS, the substantia nigra, and activates the dopamine receptors right away, okay? Uh, they don't def depend on the functional capacity of the uh, substantia nigra. The, uh, in the Parkinsonism, there is a degeneration of substantia nigra, okay? Progressive degeneration, so suppose degeneration of 10%, 20%, 50%. So the remaining, you are depending, if you use levodopa, you are, or, or uh, uh, levodopa generally, you are depending on the remaining negrostriatal uh, tissues that can convert L-dopa into dopamine, and then dopamine can exert its effect. So here you don't need that. You just go directly, okay, to the, like going to the last point, the last um, last point, the last thing you need to do is to activate the dopamine receptor. They do that right away, okay? So uh, the other thing is that they selectively affect uh, certain dopamine receptors. Dopamine itself can affect dopamine, the one, two, three, four, five receptors. They are called dopamine receptors, right? So you can have uh, so many side effects, but these drugs, as we'll see, they are found in mostly uh, D2 receptor agonists. Uh, you might have D2, D3, D2, D4, and so D2 and partial D1, something that they have some sort of selectivity. And as you know, the more selective the drug is, the less probability of side effects. Uh, they have, since therefore, they have less uh, side effects compared to levodopa and longer duration of action, generally speaking, from 8 to 24 hours, less than, uh, better than levodopa, which is about one hour. Uh, they include uh, ergo derivatives, uh, they call ergoline, like bromocryptin, and pergolide, pergolide, ergoline, pergolide, ergo, ergo. So it's kind of a little mnemonic that can help you know this is uh, ergo derivative that could be used in uh, Parkinsonism. Non-ergot uh, derivatives uh, or the uh, agonists such as Pramipixol and Rupinero. So uh, these are generally the dopamine receptors, okay, D1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, dopamine, of course, activates everything. D1, 2, D1, and 5, the periphery, the guys in the beginning, and at the end, they are GSPCR. Again, re uh, review the uh, lecture of receptor pharmacology. Again, I'll post this uh, lecture uh, uh, up here as suggested suggested video and also in the uh, description. Uh, then uh, the two, three, and four are GI PCR. They call this uh, the D, the the middle yeah, the middle guys. They call them D2. The guys in the periphery D1, D5. They call them D1 like receptor family because they are GS and uh, D2. Uh, they are GI. Uh, and all of them are similar to D2, which is GI. So all of them are GI, D2, 3, and 4, okay? Romocryptin is selectively D2 agonist and partial D1 agonist, like uh, we, we are gonna see, we are gonna see in the next slide. Or the slide after that, this is just a reminder of the uh, G-protein coupled receptors. This is the GI, okay, activate, I mean, it's like 
جي اس جي اي انهبيتس ادينايليت جي اي اي انهبيتس ادينايليت سايكليز جي اس اكتيفيتس ادينايليت سايكليز دي 2 3 4 جي اي بي جي اس جي دي 1 دي 5 They are GS, they activate adenoid synclase, so they replenish or increase amount of cyclic AMP. Bromocryptin is direct to dopamine D2 agonist. You see here the word direct, it does not need to be converted first to do dopamine, whatever itself, it can go direct and activate the receptor itself, okay? And it's D2 partial agonist. You know, a partial agonist, it's kind of in the middle between the, uh, the zero, which is the antagonist, pure antagonist, and the uh the, the the emax or the full agonist so this is kind of zero percent this is 100 percent partial agonist in the middle like maybe 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent they call it partial agonist another drug cabergoline is also a good derivative and here also the, uh, the 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 root ergo okay so cabergoline okay that can help you with that remember this is also similar to uh, bromocryptin but it's more potent uh, it's, uh, bromocryptin is uh, widely used to treat uh, BD in, uh, but, uh, in the past, but nowadays it's rarely used. It's absorbed orally. The T half is generally longer than uh, levodopa. Of course, it's used for uh, Parkinsonism. Okay. Uh, so, the, to decrease the side effects, you have to uh, go with the dose gradually. You could increase the dose gradually over two to three months. Uh, endocrine disorder could be used for the, the, and the uh, bromocryptin could be used for endocrine disorders such as hyperprolactinemia. You remember, uh, bromocryptin can inhibit uh, the release of uh, uh, of prolactin. Okay, so decrease prolactin in galactorrhea in men or women uh, with uh, some uh, milk production and uh, amenorrhea in ladies. Okay, and then suppression of lactation, generally speaking. The second guy of the dopamine receptor uh, agonist is pergolide. Again, these, the three, promocryptin, cabergoline, pergolide, these guys have ergo, ergo, promocryptin, no, but at least this mnemonic can help us. This pergolide stimulates uh, D1 and D2. You see here, D2 is almost with us everywhere. It's no longer available on the USA because it is associated with uh, uh, development of valvular heart disease. Then the non-ergot derivatives, uh, ropinirol, bramipixol, uh, apomorphin, okay? Uh, ropinirol is selective pure D2 receptor agonist, okay? It's, it could be used as monotherapy in mild cases. In advanced cases, uh, it can be used with levodopa to smooth the response to levodopa. Uh, bramipixol is D2 and D3 agonist, so some preferential activity toward the D3. D3 also have been shown to have also uh, uh, some effects that can uh, ameliorate or improve the uh, Parkinsonism uh, clinical features. Effective also as monotherapy for mild Parkinsonism. It's helpful in patients with advanced disease, uh, so that could be used with uh, levodopa again, so it can, it can decrease the dose and smooth out the response fluctuation. fluctuation. Uh, then apomorphin. Apomorphin has an affinity for D4 receptor, but also can activate D1 and D2 receptors, okay? Uh, we, we mentioned the name of this drug when we talked about the uh, off periods of the uh, akinesia to be used for temporary relief of this phenomenon, okay? On patients optimized on dopaminergic therapy. Side effects of dopamine receptor agonists uh, on the GIT because they can activate the CTZ also, uh, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, but they can decrease, you can decrease these uh, side effects by uh, decreasing uh, the, uh, decrease by taking the drug with meals, okay? Uh, could also cause uh, constipation, dyspepsia. Um, the card breaks our system uh, postural hypotension because they can cause vasodilation. Uh, and the arrhythmia because they can activate the uh, beta-1 receptors. Uh, for the ferrisos phenomenon, yes. The, when you use these drugs in the beginning, uh, they could do, they could cause uh, cardiovascular collapse. Uh, that's why we say in the previous slide you have to go gradually up with the dose over two to three months. Okay. Uh, on the CNS, they can cause dyskinesia and mental disturbances. The second class is the MAO B 
inhibitors. Now, B inhibitors like silyjoylene and the rest are joylene. Uh, please focus. Is the suffix joylene is uh, characteristic for this class. Uh, it deactivates uh, serotonin, noradrenaline, tyramine, and dopamine. Okay. Uh, this is the MAO A, okay, it's present in the intestine and lung. However, MAO B is more, more centrally, it's more in the uh, substantia nigra. It metabolizes uh, dopamine in substantia nigra and corpus tiratum, as well as blood platelets. So, this guy is kind of the focus when you talk about treatment of uh, Parkinson. okay. You have to in inhibit this guy, not this guy. So, mainly this guy, because the one that's central, you don't need dopamine to be degraded. Uh, in the uh, substantia nigra. Uh, so, selective inhibition of MAO-B delays breakdown of dopamine in substantia based in ganglia and preserves dopamine in this tissue. Okay. Selegylene, uh, selective irreversible inhibitor of MAO-B in small doses or normal doses. But if you give high dose, it can act on MAO-A. So, you, you have to use uh, no small or just normal dose, not high dose. Otherwise, you are going to activate the MAO-E which uh, can lead to side effects. Okay, it regards the breakdown of dopamine centrally. Uh, so uh, does not, uh, in, in a small dose, uh, like 10 milligrams per day, does not produce the hypertensive price. You remember when we said, uh, if you use, uh, along with uh, levodopa, uh, if you use now B inhibitors, it could, could lead to uh, a hypertensive crisis. But this guy's selective on now B, okay? So it can, it does not produce hypertensive action at small dose. Uh, and also when it's given with cheese, it contain tyramine or other sources of uh, uh, some sympathomimetic amines. So uh, this guy is kind of safe and when it's taken in small dose. Rasagyaline is similar, but it's more potent than silagyaline. Okay. Uh, they are used in combination with uh, levodopa to decrease the dose and uh, in, enhance the effect. They are not uh, effective in advanced Parkinsonism. Toxicity of these drugs include move, uh, involuntary movements, uh, agitation, confusion, and insomnia. Uh, then the catecholomethyl transferase inhibitors like polcapone and intacapone. They are selective and potent reversible catecholomethyl transferase inhibitors. They prolong the action of levodopa because the this compound can degrade levodopa. Okay, so they diminish the peripheral metabolism of this, uh, the illidopa, so decrease its clearance and increase its bioavailability. So the dose of uh, levodopa is reduced, which is good. Uh, I would like you to remember these uh, mnemonics. Uh, tall capon and intercapon, tall. Consider it tall, tall. When someone is tall, okay, like can be there from down to up, right? So it can work peripheral and central, okay? However, intercapon, please take the prefix inter or int, like enteric. Enteric will be in the GIT, so it will be peripheral. Just a little mnemonic that can maybe help you to differentiate between these two. So, tolcapon can work everywhere, peripheral and central. Uh, intercapon can work only uh, peripheral, okay? They are used uh, again as adjunct to levodopa and carbidopa for advanced Parkinson disease. Uh, they are not indicated in early Parkinson uh, disease. Uh, side effects, uh, diarrhea, abdominal pain, orthostatic hypotension, uh, or discoloration of the urine. Uh, Tolcapone can cause hepatotoxicity. I highlight them in red, okay? So can cause some uh, hepatotoxicity. So intercapone uh, works number one, which is peripherally, which is okay, okay? And uh, uh, it does not have, not associated with hepatotoxicity. There is a conventional uh, preparation called uh, Stalivo, which consists of uh, levodopa, uh, carbidopa, and intercapone. Uh, then the uh, dopamine facilitator is amantadine. Okay, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a really antiviral agent used for prophylaxis and treatment of influenza A virus. Uh, for Parkinsonism, it relieves bradykinesia, rigidity, and tremors. Uh, it reduces the iatrogenic dyskinesia, dyskinesia of unknown origin in patients' advanced case. It works by many different ways, but mainly the, uh, increasing the release and inhibiting the uptake of, uh, of uh, uh, dopamine and can facilitate the uh, influenza synthesis, okay, and uh, also affect the reuptake of dopamine in the stratum and block the uh, NDA receptors 
glutamine, glut, glutamate receptors, which is responsible for the anti uh, dyskinetic effect of this drug. It's used in mild cases of Parkinson's disease and also as an adjunct, again, to patients with levodopa. Levodopa is everywhere, huh? uh, okay, with those related fluctuations and uh, dyskinesia. So this can kind of flatten these uh, uh, fluctuations of the dose if it's used with uh, levodopa. Side effects, hallucination, confusion, insomnia, dizziness, slurred speech, nausea, uh, vomiting, and anticholinergic uh, side effects such as blaring vision, dry mouth, um, constipation, renal retention, these anticholinergic effects. Finally, the central anticholinergic, in the beginning, we say there has to be a balance between the cholinergic and the dopaminergic activity. In Parkinsonism, there is a diminished, there is decrease in the dopamine uh, production. So now the uh, cholinergic activity is predominant. We need to use uh, some drugs to inhibit the cholinergic activity. So you use central anticholinergics. We don't need to use the peripheral. We need to use the drugs that can pass through the blood-brain barrier, okay? So uh, they treat mainly tremors, rigidity, and salivation. Hypokinesia is less affected, uh, is affected at least. Remember, levodopa, we said, it affects mainly the uh, bradykinesia or hypokinesia. Here, the hypokinesia is less affected. As we said before, levodopa or dopamine initiates the movement, okay? So it's very important in that. So these guys can deal with tremors, rigidity, and salivation. Uses uh, drug-induced Parkinsonism and, and those patients who cannot tolerate levodopa. Levodopa is the drug of choice generally. And it's adjuvant could be used with levodopa. So are replenishing the amount of, levo, of dopamine by levodopa and also decreasing the cholinergic activity by the central anticholinergics, okay? And uh, the adverse effects, uh, peripheral anticholinergic effects, as I said, like uh, dry mouth, um, blurred vision, dry eyes, uh, constipation, tachycardia, uh, urinary retention, and many other side effects. Examples like benzotropine, we talked about it before, okay, and the, during when we talked about the mascarinic uh, antagonist, again, I'll put this as a suggested video so that you can review that. I cannot uh, talk in details on that. Trihexaminidine, also procyclidine, and orphanadrine. All of these are central anticholinergic. Please, please, please remember the names of the drug. Sometimes you use mnemonics and sometimes you have to repeat, keep repeating the drug, uh, talk to your colleagues, ask each other, uh, repeat while you are going, driving, walking in the corridor, everywhere, so that you can remember these drugs. I think this brings us to the end of this series of anti-Parkinsonian drugs. I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, series, and uh, I'll see you later, and I wish you a wonderful day.